Well, one part of me just wants to do one thing, but I'm going to do what Jesus wants me to do. I'm going to preach the word for just a few minutes, all right? It's about a quarter till. If you, if you preach with me, I won't preach long. You already know I'm not a long preacher. We might hang out in the altar a little while. Because, you know, we do everything for the altar. You say, what do you mean? We, we sing to get our spirits ready. We, we preach because it's the preach word of God that, that changes or will teach or talk through the word of God. But when that's all said and done, it prepares our heart for Jesus to go, hey, stop. It prepares your spirit for the Lord to say, come here, because I want to bless you. I, I want to do something for you. See, that's what I like about God. He doesn't force you. He doesn't make you. But what he does, he says, I stand at the banister of heaven, and I'm looking at all my babies, and whoever wants to come and talk to daddy can come no money you don't got to buy it you don't have to search you don't have to beg you don't have to plead you don't have to bargain you just got to be willing to say I need you God so we're going to do that in a few minutes okay are we alright let's go to the word of God the Bible said that I'm going to give them one heart he said, I'm going to put a new spirit within you. He said, I'm going to take the stony heart out of their flesh and I will give them a heart of flesh. He said, it's going to come to pass that afterward that I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He said, your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. He said, old men are going to dream dreams and young men are going to see visions. And he said, also upon the servants and the handmaiden in those days, will I pour out of my spirit. He said, they're going to prophesy, going to dream dreams. He said, but then I'm going to pour out of my spirit. One of my favorite scriptures in the whole world right here. He said, therefore, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He said, all things are passed away, but behold, all things are become new. What he was saying was, is what you used to be, is you ain't got to worry because you're going to pass, that's leaving. He said, but what you're going to do now, you're going to be new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, meaning that your past is gone, your, uh, your situations are gone, what you used to be, you're not going to be anymore. Old things are passed away, but behold, all things are become new. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm going to preach just for a few moments. If you go ahead and go on with me, I'm going to preach, don't judge my future by my past. Now I need some hand clapping in here because if you got a past, uh, you ought to be shouting right now. If you got a past, you ought to be praising him right now. <laughs> if you got a past, you ought to be saying, thank God that I've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. If God's ever done something, I'm already preaching. You can sit down when you want, but if God's ever done something for you, you ought to be worshiping him right now. If God's ever done something miraculous in your life, you ought to be praising him right now because you can tell the devil you're not going to judge my future by my past Woo. are you good how many is glad that your past has been redeemed by the blood of the lamb how many is glad that you know that when God stepped in that something began to change in your life huh? hallelujah one more time give him a hand clap of praise and when you're done <laughs> you can sit down if you want is ready for a miracle in this house here today huh how many is ready to be delivered in this house here today I know it's Sunday morning but God don't care about time he doesn't care what day it is uh, God is alive and well uh, if you want a miracle you can have it today if you want a miracle I'm telling you if you want a miracle it can happen today 
If you need deliverance, uh, it can happen in this house here today. But the Bible said, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. What kind of power are you going to receive? First of all, you're going to receive power to be a witness. That's what's first of all going to happen. But then after you get that power of the Holy Ghost, and after you look at the enemy and tell the devil, you're not going to judge my future by my past, but you can tell the devil, I'm about to put my foot on your neck because I believe that God is about to do something miraculous in my life. Now's not time to sit down. Now's not time to back away. Now's not time to throw in the towel. Now's not time to say, well, I don't know if God can do it for me or not. But now is the time to say, I know that God is alive and well. Don't you dare let the devil judge your future by your past because your past has been redeemed by the blood of the lamb he said all things are passed away but behold all things are become new I don't care how you got in here. I don't care what got you in this house. I'm telling you, when you walk through those doors, God said, I don't care what you look like. I don't care what you smell like. I don't care how you're thinking. I don't care how you're dressed. But I am about to bless you in this house. I'm telling somebody in here, he's alive and well. I'm telling somebody, he's not a dead God. He's not a dried up God. He's not a plucked up God. But but he is alive and well. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is uncertain. All you can count on is what God's going to do right here and right now. We're not promised tomorrow. Peter said, I'm, I said it, but I'm going to say it again through the scripture. Peter said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open my mouth and I am going to tell you of a truth that God is no respecter of persons. I'm telling somebody, it doesn't matter what your last name is. It doesn't matter what your pedigree is. It doesn't matter how rich or how poor, or how big or how small. All that it matters is that you got up this morning and said, you know what? I don't feel like going, but I'm going to go. And when I get there, God, I'm waiting on you to bless me. I'm waiting on you to touch me. I'm waiting on you to do something in my life. I know it's a Sunday morning, but God is alive and well on Sunday. I don't have to wait on Sunday night to get my miracle. I don't have to wait on a Monday or a Tuesday. I didn't have to pump it up or prime it up. God is already in here. He said, seek the Lord while he may be found. He said, call upon him while he is near. He said, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That doesn't just mean in salvation. There's people in this building, you're searching for something more. There's people in this building right here today, you're saying, God, I need you to touch me in this house. There's people in this house today that you've got a sickness or a disease disease uh, and you want God to handle it. Uh, you don't know how he's going to do it uh, but you're mustering up some faith uh, and say I know he's going to do it. Uh, I'm telling somebody in here he's alive and well. Uh, he can do anything uh, in this house. See the enemy can I be honest? The enemy doesn't want you to be saved. The enemy doesn't want you to be touched by the hand of God. The enemy doesn't want you to be able to turn yourself over to the master because the enemy understands that when you begin to let God work on you and you begin to let God speak to you, that the enemy begins to lose his grip. Well, I've got news for the enemy. You come a day late and a dollar short because God is already in here. God is already blessing. If you've ever got a miracle, you ought to shout right now. If God's ever done something in your life, you ought to praise him right now. If God's ever done something in your life, you ought to go on and dance in advance and say, I know God has done it. You say, how do you know it? Because he don't lie. God said, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. God said, whatever you ask in my name. 
That old Bible said that that thief, he cometh not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. But God said, that's fine. While he's saying, he said, that's what he coming to do. He said, but here's the deal. I'm coming that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So I don't care if you came here broke down. God's about to fix you up. I don't care if you come in here disturbed. God's about to settle your spirit. I don't care if you tossed and turned all night long with depression and depression, anxiety and fear. God said, I'm about to snatch that out of here. And I'm about to take care of your situation. I'm telling somebody, you better get ready. God is about to do the miraculous in here. You say, how do you know it? Because God don't lie. That Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. See, we are here because the spirit of the Lord has drawn us here. I'll be honest, more than likely, nobody here, if it did happen, please come see me so I can take a picture with you and preach about it. But more than likely, an angel of the Lord didn't wake you up this morning dress you, throw you in the car, drive you down here to CCC, kick you out and said, behold, thou church. More than likely, you came here on your own accord. Either you drove here or you came here with somebody, but more than likely, an angel didn't wake you up and say, booyah. <laughs> the Bible says that no man comes to me except the Father which hath sent me, draw him. When you got up this morning, getting that sleep out your eyes, trying to get your coffee with your stanky breath, you ain't even brushed your teeth yet. There was something that got on you and said, oh, whew, I'm running late, but I gotta get to the house of God. I, I, I don't even know if I got my shirt on. I don't even know if I got a good shirt, but I just gotta get to the house of the Lord. Wasn't no angel. That was Jesus saying, hey, shh, I got something for you. Shh, come on down to the house. Somebody said, could he touch me at my house? Oh, yeah, he could. We don't want to. He wanted us to come together. He said, because when you get together, he said, something begins to change. See, when I'm around people that know that God can do the miraculous, the faith begins to rise. When I'm around people that has already got a miracle, I'm thinking, my God, if he's blessed him, he got to definitely bless me. <laughs> if God's ever done something for her, I know he's going to do something for me because she's nuts. God's got a sense of humor. You don't believe me, just look at your neighbor. <laughs> I'm telling you, no man comes to the Father. He said, I'm the one that's going to draw. You see, everything you need is in this house here today. Everything you want is in this house here today. We can be, we, you, did you know, I didn't say you, I said we. We can be delivered today. We can be set free today. God can take care of any situation today. The problem is, is that we have to be willing to let loose. If you can let go what's in your hand, God can then let go what's in his hand. He's not going to force you to do anything that you don't want to do. That's why I always tell them, you know, I don't tell the devil, you're not going to judge my future by my past. I told him, I might have said it here Wednesday or maybe the other two nights that I was preaching. I, I know I got a couple of looks when I, I told him, I said, you know, something funny. I said, I, I know something God don't know. Yeah, I see people like, whoa, what? That man's out the Bible. Yeah, I, I, I know something God don't know. You say, well, what do you know God don't know? There, there, there's, there's one or two people I know in here. I know about your past. God, God don't know about your past. When you say, Lord, forgive me, he says, done. And, then, and, then, and because of your conscience and your guilt, well, I'm being real now. When you bring it back up, he goes, mm, 
don't, I don't remember that because I, I covered that. I, I forgave you of that. No, no, Lord, you remember Monday. You know, 7 o'clock when I, he, he said, no. No, no I, don't, I don't remember that because when you asked me to forgive you, that's what I've done. Yes. See, see, when you ask God to forgive you, he doesn't play with your emotions. When you ask God to forgive you, he don't say, well, I'm going to forgive you if you do. You know, uh, when you say, Lord, for, you know what, what I like about God? It doesn't matter what state you're in. It doesn't matter what your mindset's in. It doesn't even matter where you're at. You can say, hey, Lord, forgive me. He goes, done. Just like that. Now, I know some people think you've got to ask for forgiveness for an hour. You don't got no Bible on that. That's called tradition. He said you've got to have a willing heart, an open spirit. So when you ask the Lord to forgive you, that's exactly what he does. The Bible says ask, and it shall be given you. He said seek, and ye shall find. He said knock, and it shall be open unto you. I'm almost done. See, if you need peace, it's here. Okay? If you need joy, it's here. If you need a miracle, it's here. If you need a healing in your body or your mind or your spirit, it's here. If you want pain and scars from your past to be erased, Boy, this is stepping out, but I'm telling you, I've seen it to be done. Jesus can erase that from your memory. I am telling you, God can do anything. He said, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So whatever you need in this building here today, God can abundantly satisfy. Whatever you want today, God can do that. Whatever you're looking for today, God can handle that. Now, I know some people say, well, Smith, you just always preaching faith and signs and wonders and miracles. I was taught by Papa, whatever you preach, that's what you're going to get. If I preached on finances today, ain't no telling how much money we'd send to missions. If I, if I preached on outreach today, we'd all be wanting to go out, my God, and win the world. You, you get what you preach. And the reason I'm, I'm preaching about signs and wonders and miracles and Holy Ghost and salvation and, and God doing it is because it's what I feel and the Holy Ghost that God wants to do all across the building. So whatever we preach... That's what God's going to do. If we want to be delivered, I'm going to say it again. It's going to happen. If we want to be set free from things of this world, it's going to happen. If we want God to mend our marriage, it can happen. If we need God to take care of a a situation on our job, it can happen. If we're in uh, some kind of thing and we need God to to, to step in and, and work something out, I'm telling you, It can happen. All we have to do is put our trust in him and not in man. That's all you got to do. It's that simple. So I'm done preaching. Here we go. Nobody's going to call us out today. Y'all can't believe I'm done preaching, can y'all? Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Yeah. I've been going 16 minutes. We're on overtime. <laughs> I can't help it. Can I, t- can I tell a story real quick? This ain't preaching. It's a story. 
I was over in California preaching. I had a little dude driving me named Brother Omar. He's a little Spanish guy. And uh, we did four services that day. And, uh, man, we were, we were just, just smoking. We was having the time of our life. Brother Omar's driving. He says, Brother Smith. I'm like, yes, sir. He goes, oh, you preach to 27 minutes. And I'm like, really? I said, that, that kind of seems long. He goes, oh, oh, I'm sorry, sir. He said, you, you, you not understand. He said, all for service, you preach 27 minutes. <laughs> I said, Omar, what happened today? He said, 143, get the Holy Ghost and all four services. I go, yeah. I said, just think if I had to preach 40 minutes, he laughed. <laughs> it was Harvest Sunday. Every place I go, everybody had guests. And, and, we, and that Sunday, we had 143 receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in four different churches. <laughs> Total. Yeah, can you believe that? People got the Holy Ghost in California. Yeah, I'm, I like it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Bishop. I'm sorry. He might be watching me right now. Land of the fruits and nuts. So here we go. I love you. That's what he says, not me. I'm just repeating what he says. Here we go. Nobody will call us out today. Nobody will embarrass us today. In a few minutes, we're going to come and talk to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. In a few minutes, I'm going to ask every person, not right now, but in a few minutes, I'm going to ask every person to bow their head and close their eyes. And the reason I do that is, is number one, I want you to be real with yourself. I want you to be real with yourself. Second reason I ask people to bow their head and close their eyes is because of the fact we live in a real nosy world. <laughs> and you raise your hand and your neighbor says, hey, what you do. <laughs> Don't tell your neighbor what you've done because your neighbor does not forgive you of sins. Your, your neighbor can't forgive you of your past. All your neighbor can do is look at you, maybe tell somebody else what you've done. Your neighbor can't forgive you. Only Jesus Christ can. The third reason I ask people to bow their head and close their eyes is because I don't want you to say, well, I came to CCC today and I'm leaving the same way that I came. When you come to the house of the Lord, there's never, ever a reason you should leave the same way you came. When you come into an apostolic environment, when you come into a power-filled church of Jesus Christ, Here's what's happening. Either sometime he'll let you cry. Sometime he'll let you smile. Sometime he'll let you laugh. Sometime he'll let you squirm. Sometime you will think that my Lord, my husband, has told pastor what we talked about this week, and he's preaching to me. <laughs> and pastor didn't have a clue. That was called the Holy Ghost. Jesus so when you come to the house of the Lord, something always happens for us. Okay? So nobody will call us out. Nobody will embarrass us. In a few minutes, we'll come to the front as a family. And the Lord is going to bless and touch and heal and deliver and mend anything and everything we need him to do. Okay, in a few moments, not now, in a few moments, I'm giving instructions. I'll ask everybody to stand. Our altar ministers will come and line up across the front. You say, who are these people? These are people that pastor has said, I want you to be in our altar helping and working and moving among the people and praying. They've been, they've been taught. They've been talked to. There's just not people just running around plopping hands on people. These are men and women of God that pastor has put his hand on and said, you are extension of my hands. Okay. And then when we pray, when we come down, we're going to repent. Everybody, you say, I don't really know what to say. I got you covered. 
we're all going to say the same thing. We're all going to repent together as a family. And then after we repent, whatever we need from the Lord, that's what we're going to ask him. And while we begin to ask him in our ministry, men and women begin to pray, God is going to begin to heal, to deliver, to mend, to make things right. God is the one that's going to do it, not man. Fair enough? Okay. Bow your head. Bow your head and close your eyes. Anybody in this house here right now, anybody in this house, you've got pain in your body right now. Would you lift your hand? you got pain in your body. Hands are being lifted all over the building, front to the back, side to side, and every section. That's beautiful. You can put them down. Before you lift your hand, just listen. Every time you take a step forward, the enemy, the liar, the deceiver, Satan by name, tries to push you two steps back. For some, it might be your marriage. For some, it might be your relationship. For some, it might be your finances. For some, it might be your workforce. For some, it might be your ministry. But every time you try to do something for the kingdom of God, seems like the enemy comes in like a flood and tries to mess up what the Lord wants. But you're in the building today and you're saying, you know what? I'm not going to let the devil judge my future by my past anymore. God, I'm going to let you handle this situation for me. And you're in this building and you need a divine intervention from God. You need him and want him to handle a situation for you. Would you lift your hand? You want him to do that. Hands are being lifted all over this building, front to the back, side to side in every section. That's beautiful. You can put them down. Two more questions. Again, nobody's going to call you out. Nobody's going to embarrass you. But we're in this uh, house today and I want you to hear me. I'm not talking about once saved, always saved. That's not in the Bible. That's man-made religion. I'm not talking about accepting the Lord as your Savior. That's not in the Bible. That's man-made religion. I'm talking about what the Word of God says, that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and filled all the house where they were sitting and appeared to them clothing tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each and every one of them, and they were all filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of the Lord gave them utterance. Now, if you've never spoke that heavenly language, I'm not talking about a language you know, I'm talking about a heavenly language. If you've never spoke that language, that doesn't mean something's wrong with you. That doesn't mean you're a bad person. That means it's a gift that comes from God that you haven't received yet. And as far as you know, through your walk with Jesus Christ, you've never spoke that heavenly language like they've done in the word of God. Would you lift your hand? You've never spoke that heavenly language. I see hands. I see hands. Uh, I see more hands. I see more hands. Uh, I see more hands. I see more hands. And more hands. I see now more hands. Uh, I see more hands. That's beautiful. You can put them down. Hands lifted in every section. Last question. Before you lift your hand, just listen. <clears throat> if the Lord came today, let's say he came in the next hour, are you ready? If the answer is no, if the answer is I'm not for sure, if the answer is let me repent and move some stuff around, all those answers are beautiful because here's why. The Lord Jesus Christ has not come back yet for his bride. The second coming or the catching away or the trump of God, whatever you like to say, has not happened yet, meaning that we still have a chance to be renewed or refilled in the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. And you're in this house here today and you say, you know what? I need to be renewed or I need to be refilled in that gift for if he would come in the next hour. I'm trying to make sure that all is well between him and I. And you're going to be honest with yourself and be honest with God and say, you know what, Lord, I need to be renewed or refilled. Would you lift your hand? You're being honest. Hands are going up across the building. Again, side to side, every section. That's beautiful. You can put them down. You can lift your head and open your eyes. Thanks for being obedient today. <clears throat> About 60% of the congregation or so lifted their hands today. You know what that lets me know? That lets me know that God has found favor. Not that anything is wrong, but that God has found favor. And when God finds favor in a house, he always blesses. Now, just let me give a little instruction. Ain't nobody going to shake on nobody today. 
Ain't nobody going to pull on no one today. Ain't nobody going to make anybody do anything that they don't want to do today. I'm going to give one little scripture. The Bible talks about neglecting not the gift of, of laying on of hands. Someone might gently pray for you. We'll be fine. You might get a miracle before anybody ever even gets to you because of your faith and the way you're praying. God might start the healing process before anyone ever gets to you. Lord, the Lord might mend something before anybody ever prays for you. But you say, how's that? Happen? It's because you've taken a step of faith. And you're saying, hey, Lord, I'm opening my spirit to you today. And I'm asking you to help me. I tell everybody all the time, don't wait till it gets so bad. Then you ain't got no choice but to help you. When it just looked like something's going wrong, I say, hey, hey, daddy, take care of that. Help me with that. Because I believe that God absolutely can do anything. Okay. Now, if you're able to stand, would you stand? Altar ministers, would you step out and come down? Our altar ministers, you know who you are. Come on down, step out, turn around, face the crowd. Here we go. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Here we go. Sweet Holy Ghost. Yeah. Now come on down. Come on down. Yeah. Altar ministry's coming. Now, um, can I be real? 60, 70% of the building lifted their hands. We're all educated people. Not everybody could get just right right here. But there was hands lifted today. Pastor, that they said, you know what? I like to talk to God about the Holy Spirit. I like to talk to God about the Holy Ghost. There were, there were hands lifted today that says, you know what? I got the Holy Ghost, but I need to, I need to juice on up. I need to fill it on up. I, I need to make sure that all's well between me and the Lord. Let me put a little clause. To be renewed or refilled doesn't mean you sinned. It means you're shoring up your relationship with Jesus Christ. You're making sure. So there was hands that was lifted that said, hey, David, I need to be renewed or refilled. And there was hands today and said, hey, I'd like to talk to God about the Holy Spirit for the first time. Then there was hands that was lifted today and said, I got pain or I got a situation or I, I got something that I need God to do. I could preach about miracles and tell you about blind eyes being opened and deaf ears unstopping and and lame walking and the dead raised twice that I've seen. and I mean, I could go on and on and on, but, but the greatest miracle yes. is someone coming to the Lord and saying, hey, Lord, it's me. I want you to quit walking with me, Lord, and now start walking in me. I want you to fill me, Lord, with your spirit. See, receiving that spirit and being renewed in that spirit is the greatest miracle that you could ever experience or ever see. So there was people today that said, hey, I want to do that. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to move in, in dimensions. Is that all right? In a few moments, I'm going to say everybody that would like to talk to Jesus about the Holy Ghost, everybody would like to talk to Jesus about being renewed or refilled, I want you to come. And then everyone else that lifted their hands, I'm going to let you come in behind them. Not that one is, is better than the other. It's just the way I, I feel like we need to do it today. Okay? You might be next to a friend, a family member, a co-worker, a guest. You might be next to someone you don't even know. And you don't want to come by yourself. Welcome to the friendliest church in town. Yeah. Yeah. So here's what you do. You might, you might, or you just lean over and say, hey, he'll look at you and say, I want to go pray. And they'll go, okay, I'll go with you. So you both come. Just like that. You say, well, I don't even know them. It's okay. They don't know you either. <laughs> just come with them. You might be in the middle and you want to go pray and there's people on both sides. <laughs> and you're thinking, I want to get out. You know what you do? Just tap them on the shoulder say, excuse me. I need to get out. If they don't move, just run over them. And, and then when they do get up, you know, we'll pray for them. And, no, I'm kidding. Nobody's ever done that. I just do that to lighten it up, okay? Are we good? Yes. Look at your neighbor. Say, you okay? Look at him again. Say, God's fixing to bless you. 
<laughs> All right, listen. If you want to talk to the Lord about the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, whatever you'd like to call it, or you want to be renewed or refueled in the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, would you go ahead and start stepping out and just coming down? Come on, just step out. Let's give them a hand clap while they're coming. Come on, here they come. Here they come. They're coming on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Come on. They're, they're stepping out. Now come all the way down. Here they come. Come on. They're, come on. They're coming down. Here they got them coming from right here. Yeah. Come on. I saw other hands lifted. I'm just waiting on you to just go ahead and step on out. Come on. Here y'all. Y'all come on down this way, guys. Y'all come on down this way. Help me out here. We got people coming. All right. All right. Still got people coming. Now, while they're coming down, you lifted your hand because you wanted God. Okay, I'm still waiting. We still got folks coming down. All right, I'll just wait. I almost went too quick here. All right, you want to be renewed. I saw hands that were lifted about being renewed. I saw hands lifted about uh, I want it for the first time. Anybody else want to come down before we start? Because I'm fixing to tell everybody else that lifted your hand. Now, you lifted your hand that you wanted Jesus to do something else for you. Would you step out and would you begin to come down? Now, come all the way down. Don't stop in the hall. Let's give them a hand clap while they're coming down. Come on. Come all the way down. That's right. Come all the way down. That's right. Come on. That's right. Come on. They're still coming down. That's right. Folks are still coming down. All right. <coughs> y'all just keep coming on this way, Mom. We're about to have a traffic jam on all three. All right. Y'all just keep on. There we go. Just keep on coming down. That's right. Yeah, awesome. All right. Look at that. Just what Jesus, that's what he does. Altar ministers, I don't know who's who. Again, it's not about numbers. But when you do pray for someone uh, that receives the gift of the Holy Spirit, make sure you just kind of let us know. And we're going to give God honor and praise and glory. And we're going to worship him. I think we had five receive the Holy Ghost Wednesday. And uh, we had seven receive the Holy Ghost last night. And uh, so Jesus, Jesus can do great things. We had signs and wonders and miracles. Jesus is doing great things. All right. Let me just talk real quick. Here we go. We're going to repent. And then after we repent, all I want you to just start saying is thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost, for the ones that would like to receive that or be renewed. And uh, I'll just tell you, like I said, I guess every time, huh? uh, if all you know is English and you begin to speak a language you don't understand, congratulations, that's the evidence of the Holy Ghost, and now you're bilingual. And if you're already bilingual and that starts happening, that's the evidence of the Holy Ghost, and now you're trilingual. And if you're trilingual and that starts happening, my Lord, that's the Holy Ghost, and you're smart. <laughs> here we go. So God's about to bless people here. Now, I need a praying church. For all these beautiful people here, I want you to let your faith loose and believe that whatever they're praying for, God's going to do it for them because I'm counting on all of y'all. Are we good? All right. So let's all repent as a family. Say, Lord, forgive me of all my sins. I'm sorry, Lord, for everything that I've thought, that I've done, that I've said. And that I've heard. Forgive me Lord. Of things. I don't even realize. I have done. I give myself. 100%. To you Lord. Thank you Lord. For my miracle. For my deliverance. For my healing. Thank you Lord. For forgiving me. Thank you Lord. For forgiving me. All right, I want us to begin to pray right now. Come on. Let's find somebody to pray for. Let's find somebody to pray for. Come on. By the authority and the word of God and by the power of the name Jesus, receive you the gift of the Holy Ghost. Receive your miracle. Receive your deliverance. That's right. Come on, altar minister. Find somebody. Find what they need from the Lord and you pray the prayer of faith. And it's going to happen right now. By the authority... And by the power of the name, Jesus, receive you the gift of the Holy Ghost. Receive your miracle. Receive your deliverance. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Come on. I want you to begin to pray right now. I want you to begin to believe right now. 
God is about to move on your behalf right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, I need a pray in church right now. I'm going to put this mic down, but I need a pray in church right now. Come on, CCC. I want you to open your mouth and pray in the Holy Ghost. We got one right there receiving the gift of the Spirit. Come on, we've had two receive the gift of the Holy Spirit over here. Come on, altar team, you got to keep moving. Come on, altar team, keep moving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 